Make sure to book your next fishing trip in Louisiana with a member of the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. Visit lasaltwater.com today. Today on Louisiana Outdoor Adventures TV, no fishing poles. Today, we're not going on a fishing charter, we're going on an oyster charter. That's right. The test fishes are now doing oyster charters down here in Plaquemines Parish. Well, what does that mean? You can go out on a real oyster lugger, and that's what we're gonna do today, and they're gonna show you exactly how oyster boats work in Louisiana and how the best oysters in the world get to your table. We're leaving out of Port Sulphur on the KJ. This boat's been working in down here in Plaquemines Parish since 1982, and you're gonna learn everything about oyster fishing. It's a $317 million industry, 4,000 jobs, and we're gonna show you how it's done and how you can come on this boat too and see how it's done today on Louisiana Outdoor Adventures TV. Closed captioning is brought to you by Busby Modular Tackle Storage. Customizable internal bins allow you to personalize your tackle box, featuring a waterproof and airtight gasket, which makes it float. Secured with stainless steel hinges and latches, industrial strength materials ensure this box is built to last. Get yours today at busby.com. So my name is Eden Tesvich and this is my husband Matthew. We started these tours a couple months ago because people in Plaquemines Parish, whether they're friends, family, when we take them out on the boat just for a Sunday fun day boat day, they don't know exactly how it happens, how the oysters go from being harvested to ending up on your plate at a restaurant. So we wanted to give everybody the behind the scenes experience to see how this all works. Yeah, to piggyback off what Eden said, it never fails. Anytime I bring some friends or even some family members out in the bayou that have never seen the process, you tend to dump that first dredge of oysters and they're just looking wide-eyed. They've never seen it before. You can tell they have a hundred different questions, but they don't even know where to start. Well, the tours we're offering now, we'll be able to answer any question you have and you're going to be wide-eyed as well. Well, you're about to see a lot of very good things about this oyster tour, and one of the good things is if you don't like a long boat ride, don't worry, you're not going to have one. Where they keep the boat to where the oyster reef is is about a 17-minute ride, and the boat cruises at about seven and a half knots. So we're going to head on over to the reef, which is right on the eastern side of Bay Adams, and show you how an oyster lugger works. We're going to get ready to fire off these dredges, and he's going to show you what's going on, but this is the beginning step to how oysters are harvested here in Blackman's Parish. All right, so what are we doing now, buddy? All right, I just turned the winch on, let her warm up for a second. All right, so there's our winch. We got that turned on. So the good thing about this is that it's all winch power and not Kevin power. All right. Put this out. Watch the slack right where you're at. like riding a bike. Yep. So we're gonna put one out on each side or just one on one side? Uh, I think just one. Just because if we have one in the water, it'll actually help us turn a little better with this wind. Right. So normally, in this, you could put these dredges over. You could put two of them over. We're just doing one for the tour here today. Uh, so with wind like this, I put a little, a little more slack than I would normally put, but we're going to pull it up right now. Uh, it's going to be a little loud, but this is basically just crushed concrete we planted on a muddy reef. Hold on.
Welcome back to Louisiana Outdoor Adventures TV as we are on Tesfitch's Oyster Tour today. And when we left you, we were picking up our first dredge. And as part of this tour, they're going to make three dredges. The first one is going to be on young oysters. The second one is going to be on an oyster reef that's got some dirtier oysters on it with mussels. But those oysters are harvestable when we'll show you that. And then our final dredge is going to be on a very clean reef with some great oysters for the half shell. But let's see these young oysters now and how they develop in the great coastal estuary of Plaquemines Parish. Yeah, here we have a, a younger crop of oysters. So when we talk about a younger crop of oysters, what are we, how old are these oysters? I mean, what, what's kind of the... So these rocks, uh, my dad put these rocks out here about eight months ago. And uh, you can see the oysters are about an inch, an inch and a half, uh, inch, inch and a half big. Uh, this was actually a, a later spat. This, this one's less than an inch right here. These, this might have caught about a couple months ago. But uh, spots like this, we also have some leftover, nicer looking oysters. This is the stuff you'll see in oyster bars and restaurants. And the, the rocks, these are what they put out, right? And talk about what's, I mean, what keeps the oysters on an oyster reef? Right, so these are, this is crushed concrete. We'll, uh, we'll put these out basically because it's a cheaper option. Uh, another option is limestone. And uh, you just basically want to find a decent bottom, uh, most, mostly like a pre-existing reef. Right. Uh, you never really just want to throw rocks on anything. Uh, if you fish the oysters before, like, like I said, here's some nice half shell oysters. We fished these before, and this is actually a bigger piece of concrete. This is a little, a lot older actually. This is, you're looking at maybe two and a half, three years old. But uh, you even have oysters that can uh, catch on other oysters. Here's about an inch and a half oyster growing on an already existing oyster right here too. You got about an inch and a half oyster right there. So this is the, this is a reef now, you said these are young oysters, so when is this dredge gonna be, I mean, when is this reef gonna be good for, you know, your prime time good oysters? How long does it normally take? Uh, so oysters this size, to get to about this size, you're gonna be looking at two and a half, three years, but you also work them over the course of, you know, course of time, you work them. The more you work them, the more the dredge passes over everything, the more nice and round things are gonna look like this. But it's about two and a half to three years we'll be able to fish these and put them in this basket right here. Good deal. One of the other surprising things that I've learned on this tour is that the three reefs that we are going to dredge on are literally right next to each other, within 100 to 200 yards. So we showed you the young oysters. Now we're gonna make a dredge and show you the oysters that are not gonna be used for on the half shell, but they are used for po' boys and things like that. This is the dirty dredge, and here it comes. But what's amazing... All right, shake and chain, it's a good sign. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing because I get on these things and you start to think about what you expect or not expect, and the one thing I didn't expect was how quickly you can pull a dredge up and have a bunch of oysters in it. Right. It's so much different than oh, yeah. people working with a shrimp trawl or something like that. You can, you know, obviously you get on these things, and you know, it's not that big of an apparatus, but. It helps when you know right where the reef is, too. Yeah, that's a, that's a big plus. Let's check it out. All right, so here we go. Within a minute, we're coming up. That's better. Yep. So what he's doing now is he's dropping and just kind of getting the mud off of everything. All right, here we go. We're gonna get everything back set up over here. This out of the way. All right. All right. A little uglier than the last one, huh? Right. So <laughs> this is what you were saying about these are the ones that have the muscles attached to them and everything. But like you were saying, 
there's a use for everything. And maybe we can open one of these oysters and show people how they are good. Oh yeah. You know? And uh, but so the muscles attach to these, so there's absolutely no on the half shell use for them. No. But there is a but the even though the muscles are on these, the oysters are still alive and good. Correct. You're right. So these oysters are alive, at least most of them. Like right here, uh, you see a big double. You you see about a five inch oyster right here, and another four and a half to five inch oyster. Oh, let me take this out. So yeah, these, these oysters are covered in mussels, but you know, it, they're still good oysters. They're still alive and well. You could actually see this mud line right here. This was the only stuff uh, poking out of the mud. All the rest is submerged. But uh, these mussels are gonna hang on un unless you do something to them, and unless you pass the dredge over them. And sometimes they're so stubborn, they still hang on, you know? And they tend to not like the salt water but here we are, the water's super salty in November, and you can still see the mussels hanging on, you know? But then I see, now, correct me if I'm wrong, a couple, this is a, that's a decent oyster. Right, the, you have a marketable mix of oysters, so down there, uh, these nice ones are gonna be hanging out, and this big stuff is poking up like this. So, to get some of this nicer stuff on these uglier reefs, you give it a little more chain, you know, to. Get, not dig, but kind of get under this stuff, you know. But uh, this, this, these mussels, they they tend to take, you know, when you don't work a spot too often. Uh, right. So wherever that dredge is passing as often as possible, you're gonna see cleaner stuff like this. That's just how it happens. Uh, it's it's kind of up to you to get rid of some of this, even if they naturally grow in an area. Or Welcome back to Louisiana Outdoor Adventures TV. And now it's time for us to do our third dredge. And this one is gonna be on the Queen Oyster Reef. And these are the oysters that you're gonna see on the half shell, the ones you're gonna see on all the oyster bars, and better yet, the ones that we're gonna taste later on in the show. But here comes the dredge. Go one. Yep. Big ones in there too. Yep. But we'll get some of that out of the way. But this is our third dredge, and we're gonna have more, more queen stuff in here than we've had in the other ones. Right. So, so once we move some of stu this stuff to the side. So this is the marketable stuff you'll see in restaurants and oyster bars. Obviously, like I mentioned before, the mussels, we're gonna show you exactly how we clean these. Right. But uh, right away, you can see more, more round stuff like you'd see in the restaurants. Sometimes you get lucky and uh, you have a clean product like this and you don't even have to hit them. Like, I'll throw both of those in there like that. But especially when you're working a nice half shell oyster that restaurants are gonna be serving, you can see the mussels are on the side. You wanna shave those off. And it's got a, a hammer in and a blade in. You know, the blade in's usually for mussels, but you basically don't want the buyers to see that. Clean those like that. And I'm just keeping them right here so I don't end up hitting your camera guy right there. Okay. But you basically throw them one at a time in the basket when you clean them. And that's your good stuff. Now, uh, Basically, your bigger oysters. Uh, this is a nice, ugly one for you. Okay. Here we have, uh, we have, I mean, all tons of ages right here. We got about a month, month and a half old. We have like a four month old right there. A bunch of small ones right there. And then we have these two big grandpas. This one. <laughs> you wanna go for the shell. And typically in a shucking sack, you just clean the muscles real well and you could throw a double that's connected like that, uh -huh. but for the sake of the tour, let me clean these a little better. 
Wow. And you saw what we started with? Didn't look like an oyster when we started with it. Right. And I now don't... it's starting to look like an oyster. Yeah, we like to call that stuff footballs. It's the proper way to work. You want oysters in front of you, but you always kind of want to keep this clear. And uh, here we have, the, the further you dig, you, you can see more and more nice oysters. You know, they're all up and in there. And same thing, I'll put it right here because I don't want to hit your guy. It's amazing so, the speed you go with that. Uh, I'm just slowing it down for the camera. I can pick it up a little bit. Oh, I, yeah, <laughs> let me see you at real speed like, right. so folks can actually see exactly how fast this process is. The better you get at this, you can almost not look at where you're swinging. And right when you're about to get ready to throw it, you're already looking at something else. You know, it's just, it's just something you get used to. Yeah. Obviously, I started talking trash and I missed the basket that time. That's okay. <laughs> How the Pros Do It is brought to you by the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. Visit LASaltwater.com. We can comfortably take about 8 to 10 people on the tours. And right now, the way we're booking it is that they're available Saturdays and Sundays. We offer a morning tour that starts around 10 o'clock and then a sunset tour that starts around 3. And when it's finished, it's about a two and a half hour tour. So when it's finished, it'll be a beautiful view in the sunset, you know, in the ride in with the background, eating oysters and just enjoying the time with your family. All right, through the magic of television, we have made it back to the dock, and this was just a total blast to go out here and do this. Actually learned a lot out there with Matthew, and now we're going to, now if you're on the tour, a lot of times on the way back in, they're going to start shucking the oysters, but we're going to shuck the oysters back here. So now here's the finished product. When you come back, that's what we kept, and Matthew's going to show you now how to shuck a Louisiana oyster. So we call this corner the hinge right here. It's kind of a pointier part. And then this is the bill that's curved in. And I'm gonna explain a lot more on the tour. But you basically cut that eye and it's connected on both sides. So you wanna get that other side. And there you have it, actually a nice fat oyster for the winter time. Usually there's not meat, you know, this much meat, but uh, it's a pretty solid oyster for November in, in uh, Louisiana. And it doesn't get any fresher than this. Nope, not at all. Like the signs you see fresh oysters at the restaurants, they're uh, not exactly as fresh as this, you know? Not at all. Those are absolutely beautiful Louisiana oysters right there. So now, what it's time for to end the tour is to have a delicious, fresh Louisiana raw oyster. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna get, we're gonna use, we're gonna use, a, I'm gonna use, take a little hot sauce, Get the fork, take an oyster, so I'll take a little hot, <laughs> and the bowl's That's gone, fine. so That's we're not fine. using the bowl anymore. <laughs> and this is what you can do on the tour. So I'm just gonna take a little hot sauce, put it on top of the oyster. Oh yeah. And then I'm gonna take the fork. I could slurp it too, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take it like that. and it doesn't get any fresher or any better than that. All right, well, we all had a raw oyster, and we're gonna cheer, cheer. Hey, this tour is outstanding. This is just an amazing thing. Matthew, you guys have done a great job, needing a great job of putting this together. Thank you so much for inviting us out today. Folks, I don't care where you are, if you're coming down here to Plaquemines Parish to fish, come do this. If you're going to the New Orleans area to visit, come do this. It's great entertainment and fun for all ages. It's going to take about two, two and a half hours of your time. And we can't thank you guys so much for an educational and fun experience today. I want to thank everybody for watching the show today. 
Don't forget, we have a brand new YouTube channel out as well. Inside Louisiana Outdoor Adventures, you'll see much more of this trip and so many more things that we're doing now. Subscribe to the channel, search for it on YouTube. It's Inside Louisiana Outdoor Adventures. For producer Jim Caesar, I'm Kevin Ford. Thanks for joining us. Come out here and see some Louisiana oyster action at its finest right here in Plaquemines Parish. We'll see you next week. So long, everyone. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. <laughs>